What up, my gangsters? Yo, guys, what's up? Stave, the open source gangster here. So, one of the advantages of Android running off of Linux kernel is the fact that you can run practically any distribution of Linux within Android, and that includes Ubuntu 13.10. Now, this is very easy to do thanks to an app called Complete Linux Installer. Now, all you need to have to do this is a root Android device with at least one to four gigabytes of free space, and that is it. So, let's get to it. All right, so before we get started, there are a few apps that you're gonna to need to download. The first app is Complete Linux Installer. Now, I've used this before in my past video on how to run Ubuntu 12.04 on Android, and the same app provides the ability to run Ubuntu 13.10 on Android. Next, you'll need to download an app called Android VNC Viewer. And that's just so that we can actually view Ubuntu once we get it up and running through Terminal. So that's also available free. Next, you need to download an app called Terminal Emulator. And this is essential so that we can get Ubuntu up and running and we can interact with it through the terminal. Finally, we need to download a file explorer. Now you can use any file explorer of your choice. I'm just gonna use Astro File Explorer, but like I said, you can use any of your choice. And this is just so we can extract a zip. So I'm gonna use Astro. Okay, so let's start. So open up a complete Linux installer. It's gonna ask you if you wanna install the boot scripts in BusyBox, select okay. And make sure that you are booted. So granted super user permission. And it's gonna begin installing the scripts. And here we are. Now let's go up here to install guides. This install guide is very easy and walks you through the installation. And as you can see, Complete Linux Installer offers you not just Ubuntu 13.10, but many other distributions of Linux. So let's go to Ubuntu 13.10. All right, so it's making sure that we have uh, root and a kernel has loop support devices. Uh, most likely a kernel might or might not have it. It's always hit and miss for loop support, but just check it out and see. And also it wants us to enable uh, USB debugging. And I already have mine enabled, but if you don't, go up here to settings, go down to developer options, right down here. And if you do not see developer options, go to about phone or tablet and make sure you select this multiple times. And it's gonna prompt you for developer options. Then within developer options, go to developer options and USB debugging and make sure that's enabled. So let's go back to complete Linux installer. All right, so we all have all that enabled. Go to page two. Now we can choose the image that we want to download. We can download uh, the core image, uh, large or small. If you want to use Ubuntu just through the terminal, download the core image, it'll save you a lot of time and it's a smaller download. But if you want the whole GUI and everything else, download large image. So I'm going to download large image. We're going to go to SourceForge. Always. And it's going to start our download. And always. And here we go. It's going to start downloading the Ubuntu image. This is going to take a little while. Just sit back and relax and wait for it to finish. All right. So our download has finished at the top. So now what we need to do is we need to extract the zip folder and extract the contents to a folder called Ubuntu on our SD card. So first, let's go into our file explorer. So I'm going to Astro. Now I've already done this, but what I'm going to do is make a folder called Ubuntu. And to do that, all you need to do is go up to here and hit the new folder icon, and then create the folder name, type in Ubuntu, and hit create. And make sure it's at your SD card location. So make sure it's in your SD card zero or SD card location. So once we create our new Ubuntu folder, what we need to do is extract the contents from Ubuntu zip to that folder. So go to download, Go to Ubuntu Zip. Let's go back here. We're actually tap and hold it. I'm gonna go to Extract here, and it's gonna extract the contents of the zip. All right. So the extraction is completed. So now what we want to do is we want to move the Ubuntu image file and the MD5 file to the Ubuntu folder. So I'm gonna select this, these two files. Then at the bottom, I'm going to go to move and let's go to SD card zero and let's go to Ubuntu and paste. All right. So after we transfer the files, we need to do one last thing, which is not really mentioned in the um, instructions, but it's important to do. We need to rename these files and just make sure it says Ubuntu for both these files. So simply select the file you want to rename and go to rename. And you still want the image extension, but get rid of all this other stuff. All right, so get rid of all that and just hit rename. 
and do the same thing for the other file. Rename. This is an MD5 file, not as important, but still good to have. Get rid of the everything else of the image, MD5. Rename. All right, so once you name both the files, now you're ready to launch Ubuntu. So now let's go back into Complete Linux Installer. We're gonna go over here to launch and make sure the distribution is on Ubuntu and hit Start Linux. It's gonna open up to Terminal Session, grant it super user permission. Uh, do we wanna check the MD5 file? I'm gonna set N for no. It's not really that important. So now it's gonna ask us, do we wanna start VNC server? Hit Y for yes. Uh, we do not want an SSH server, or at least I don't want one. If you want one, then feel free to, you know, start it. But I'm going to hit N for now. Uh, we're going to enter the screen size. Since I'm running uh, Nexus 7 2013 edition, which has a 1080p screen, I'm going to set it to a full 1080p. So 1920, 1920 by 1080. I'm going to hit enter. Uh, Password, um, I don't know. I guess we'll call this Ubuntu. All right, and let's save the settings. We're gonna hit Y for yes. Okay, and if you see root at local host, that means you are in Ubuntu. So right now, Ubuntu is up and running, and if you're a terminal wizard, a terminal geek, you can just go right here in the terminal and do all the fun stuff you like to do. However, I'm a person, I love GUIs and they're just awesome. So let's actually look at the GUI for this. So we're going to keep that up and running. I'm gonna go and open up Android VNC Viewer. So let's go and find Android VNC. All right, so close this. For the nickname, I'm just gonna call this Ubuntu. For the password, it's gonna be Ubuntu. The address, we can keep a blank or type in local host. And port 5900. And one change of color format to 4BPP. 24 bits right there. Now hit connect. Now we're connecting and oh no, what is this? All right, so if you try to connect and you get this message at the top that says, could not start Dbus, can you install, can you call Qbus? Do not panic because there is a way around this. Now, huge thanks goes out to Google reviewer uh, Nikki Okotia, but uh, who reviewed the app Complete Linux Installer because he put in a uh, suggestion if you do get this bug to download an app called SE Linux Permissive. So let's go to that. So what we want to do is go to the Play Store and one type in type in SE Linux. You're going to see an app that says SE Linux Mode Changer. What you want to do is you want to download and install that, then open it. Grant it super user permission. All right, now you want to do is change it to permissive. Go back to terminal emulator. We want to exit it out. So let's close out Ubuntu. Shutting down Linux Arm, and exit again. And want to exit one more time. Here we go. Now let's go back to complete Linux installer. Start Linux. All right, it's going to ask, do we want to load our configuration file or our MD5 file? No, configuration file loaded. Okay, and it is going to start Linux. So now let's go back to Android VNC Viewer. Knowledge, let's close. Keep all of our settings the same and hit connect. And here we are, it is loading and we are inside of Ubuntu 13.10. So, we are in Ubuntu 13.10. Now, this is using the KDE uh, uh, Linux desktop, and that's because KDE is generally uh, quicker, lightweight, faster to use than something like Unity uh, or even GNOME. You know, GNOME is not really, you know, a thing anymore, but it is uh, quicker and lightweight to use. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of KDE. I mean, it's nice and everything, but for my likes, it's just way too... Um, I don't know, it's just not attractive, <laughs> honestly. But you know, it gets the job done and it's actually very uh, fluent, which I like about it. And here we are inside LibreOffice. Let's create a new document. Now, one thing I know a lot of people are gonna ask is can you use your own keyboard and mouse? And actually you can, and I can show you that in one second. Let's actually just go up here, 
file. Come on, come on. There we go. New uh, text document. And I just quickly connected my uh, USB uh, host adapter. And as you see, I right now have my keyboard right here. And what's cool is that USB does work. So as you see, I'm typing. And this works the same way with a mouse, um, even a flash drive. I mean, a lot of USB host devices will work. Linux applications do work on here. As long as they're compiled to work with ARM, then you should have no problem with it. And here we go. GIMP is also open up on here and working just well. All right, so once you're done playing around with Linux, what you wanna do is make sure you close it. So first disconnect the VNC, then go back to terminal emulator and type in exit. It's gonna shut down everything and type in exit again and exit one more time. And here we go. And now you shut down Linux. So guys, this has been how to run Ubuntu 13.10 on your Android device. Like I said, it's really cool just to have the power of a desktop operating system on your mobile device. I mean, there's so many uses you can do with this and it's just a really cool thing. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another guys and video. Thanks.